Hello everyone. Happy Friday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5 on Friday. This is Lita Gursa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I am so excited to share with you the fantabulous New Horizons suite from the Stampin' Up! January June mini catalog. Now this episode was supposed to have happened on Tuesday, but sadly Tuesday I was not feeling well. Um, I slept most of Tuesday and Wednesday and several COVID tests later I am negative and uh, I think it was just a sheer exhaustion, honestly. Um, it's been a crazy school year. So anyway, I'm feeling much better. Um, still kind of tired, but the weekend is here, so I have some time to rest up. Actually, there's not going to be much resting this weekend. I'm so excited because we got all of the pieces needed to rework my work area here in my studio. We've been working away at it since Christmas. You can see behind me, I got a new high table, which is awesome. Standing height, fantastic for doing class prep. Got awesome new storage behind me. I've got more storage over there, but the area in front of me and the area all to the left of me here is going to all get redone. I'm so excited. So my husband's going to be a busy guy building Ikea furniture this weekend, and I'm going to be busy moving everything out of here and then moving it all back in once it's done. So it'll be a busy weekend, but good busy because, you know, it's always fun to reorganize and redesign your studio, right? Anyway, so I am here today to talk to you about the New Horizons Suite. I'm going to show you three awesome projects. Um, I'm almost embarrassed at how easy these projects are. Like, really. Like, <laughs> I almost When I made them, I was like, do I really need to do a video on this? But I really want to show you how easy it is to create beautiful landscapes with the fantastic products in this suite. So let me pull up my video on my iPad here so I can see who's joining me. There I am. All right, we've got Rana and Penny and Jen and Jackie and Sam. Thanks so much for joining me, everybody. I hope you had a great week. The weekend's here, TGIF. It's weird to be doing this on a, on a Friday, but it's actually kind of fun too because it's the weekend. <laughs> and weekends are for stamping, right? All right, Deb is here. Louise, hello, hello, ladies. Hi, Laura. All right, so we are going to flip the camera. I'm going to show you the products and then we're going to get right to it. Okay, hi, Kathy. Good to see you. All right, I'm going to flip a roo here and we're going to get to it. Ooh, this is a little stiff today, kind of like I am. <laughs> okay, there we go. I'll just nudge that up a bit so we're centered. That looks good. Hi, Chris. All right. Hi, Teresa. So glad you're joining me. Friday's a good day, eh? Everybody's got time on Fridays. Okay, so here are the products in the suite. Not all of them. These are the ones I'm going to be featuring today. There is some a fabulous ribbon. <coughs> Excuse me. And some embellishments that you will see as we um, put together our projects. So obviously, every suite has a focal point, which is the bundle. We have um, a stamp set with... Fantastic sentiments, um, scenery pieces that kind of look sort of um, arbitrary if you don't have, if you don't work with the dyes and the paper. Um, but when you pull everything together, they work so well. And these add amazing perspective to the paper when, when you use it. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Fabulous dyes. Again, some that kind of go, okay, what do we do with this? I'm going to show you. Um, again, some that are sized to add perspective. Fabulous mountains. Love this sort of rickety picket fence and the grass. So that is the bundle. And then, of course, the paper. Honestly, I don't think I've ever loved a designer series paper more. <laughs> this stuff is awesome because it is so, so easy to use to make beautiful projects. So it's a six by six pack, which is what you want because all of the images are scaled for a card front, right? If these were 12 by 12 pages, the images would be too big and you wouldn't be able to use them on a card. But this stuff is just fabulous. I'm just gonna quick show you. So we've got so many beautiful watercolor uh, landscape designs. We're gonna use some of these today. So fantastic. And what I discovered as well, when you flip these upside down, like actually flip them upside down, you get a totally different perspective. Now on the backs of these, there's another beautiful landscape. We get some awesome washes um, that can be used for backgrounds. They can be used for die cutting. Um, the, this sheet looks gorgeous um, using the new tulip dies, um, putting together beautiful 3D flowers. 
Here's the back side of these ones. Again, more washes. This is great to use for die cutting the grass. Um, this one works really well for the grass as well. So, so many possibilities with this paper, but honestly, I am using these landscapes so much. So let me show you what we're gonna make. So the first one, this one I posted way back on Monday um, before I really started feeling crummy. It was really Monday night that um, I got the chills and not feeling good at all. Um, but this is um, the easiest card and this is what I mean. Like I almost am embarrassed to be featuring this in a video because they're so easy. You're gonna go, wow, did I really need her to show me that? But you know, here I am anyway. <laughs> <laughs> because I wanted you to believe just how easy it is. All right, so I started with a sheet of DSP. Let me see if I can find that pattern, this one here. And then I just took my stitched rectangles and I cut three different rectangles. I wasn't really paying too much attention to the size. I knew I wanted one fairly tall, skinny one, one slightly smaller one, and then one itty bitty one. So I just kind of played around and cut out a bunch of rectangles. And then I started stamping. So I'm gonna take my tall skinny one first and I'm gonna bring in my Evening Evergreen ink and I'm gonna stamp the trees. Now I wanna try and stamp the trees sort of along that horizon line. I don't wanna do them too high. <laughs> Again, ask me why I'm pointing this out because the first time I did it, I did them too high and I had floating trees above the horizon, okay? Now there are fixes for that. You can get your blends, you can, there are all sorts of things, but just trust me, your life will be better if you um, try to stamp your trees so that they're running along the horizon, not above it, <laughs> okay? So my green is kind of here, so I'm just gonna kind of make sure that the, the base of the trees there is sort of below that green. Okay, even there, look at, see, it's kind of floating, but it's okay, it's anchored. That's just a little stream or something, right? It's a puddle. So there are my trees, it's that easy. Um, I'm gonna keep my evening evergreen out because we're gonna need that in a minute. And then on this one, I didn't do anything. I just left it as is. And then I have my little bitty square here and I'm gonna stamp the birds in some basic gray. So I'm just gonna take my birds. Now these guys, you wanna make sure you're stamping them right side up. <laughs> I had to think about it a little bit, okay? Because there are some with their wings fully outstretched, there are some with their wings down, there are some with their wings up. So you kind of have to like think about, they kind of work both ways, but I think this is the right way up. So with this one lead bird sort of flying off, in, off to the right. So we're just gonna stamp this on our smallest rectangle here in some basic gray. That's all there is to it. Like really you guys, <laughs> it's so easy. All right, so then I have a piece of basic white cardstock. It's four by five and a quarter inches, I should say, not centimeters, because we have some from U the UK here watching today. Hello <laughs> to our UK viewers. Hi, Shaz, how are you? Um, I actually have a colleague at school. Our office manager at school is from the UK, and her nickname is Maz. So her name's Maria, but we all call her Maz, and she's fantastic. And she adds, she classes up the place when she does her... Um, Announcements over the PA. We all love her British accent. She just makes our, our school sound so much classier with her <laughs> her lovely British accent. So, all right. So I, all I'm doing is laying out my rectangles on my basic white piece. And that is just to get an idea of spacing because I'm gonna stamp my sentiment in this sort of empty space down below. So I'm gonna ink it up with some evening evergreen. Sorry, my nose is a little runny because it's cold in here. <laughs> And when I'm cold, my nose runs. So I apologize for any sniffling and snuffling that I'm gonna do. Um, but it's preferable to, well, what would happen if I didn't sniffle? So there we go. <laughs> All right, so there is my sentiment. A little smudgy there, but that's okay. I can live with that. I can fix that with a marker after. And that's really all there is to it. Now I'm just gonna take my dimensionals and I'm going to pop up each of my rectangles here. And apparently my dimensionals are actually stuck to my little bin here. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna add just a few to the back of each rectangle. I'm gonna do them one at a time just because I wanna get them uh, positioned just so. So we'll get rid of this backing first. And what I'm looking at is trying to have sort of an equal border on like the side and the bottom of this one and the side and the top of this one. So it's just gonna kinda go right about there. Not quite straight. Let's see if we can fix that up. There we go. Okay. And then we'll do this guy. So we'll add 
couple of dimensionals to it. Sorry, I'm sniffling again. I Sniffling drives me crazy. When I'm at school and it's quiet in my room and <laughs> somebody's sniffling, it makes me crazy. So I'm going to apologize probably several times because sniffling is like one of those sounds that I can't stand. But I can't help it because I don't have any tissues at hand. So yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, our last little rectangle is just gonna go, again, I'm kind of paying attention to spacing, just kind of wanting to get things spaced equally here. All right, and that's it. Like, it's that easy. Um, I'm gonna put this on a <clears throat> soft succulent card base. It is four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored in the middle at five and a half. So we'll fold that in half along our score line. <clears throat> and we're gonna add a little bit of adhesive. See, oh, the cats are running around upstairs. It sounds like a herd of elephants. There's only two of them, yet they sound like a herd. There we go, and that's it. Like, so easy. The paper it just makes this a piece of cake. Like, two, three stamped images and you're done, all right? Now on the inside of this one, <clears throat> I added another sentiment and some more stamped trees. Done and done, super simple. All right, okay, so that is number one. I'm just going to take a quick drink because I am croaky. <clears throat> there we go. And we're going to move on to number two. Now, number two is a slimline card. I posted this earlier today. And I made this one because I wanted to highlight the fact that we now carry slimline envelopes. So we've been asking for these for a really long time. Slimline cards are sort of all the rage. Everybody's making them. But we haven't had envelopes for them, so we've been having to make our own or use business envelopes. And who wants to use a boring business envelope when we make a beautiful handmade card, right? So now we have these lovely slimline cards. They're lined, or not cards, envelopes for slimline cards. They're lined, they're absolutely gorgeous, and they come in a pack with um, soft succulent, white, and basic gray. So has kind of all your bases covered. So I wanted to make a slimline card to show off these beautiful envelopes. So this is the one that I made. Um, slimline cards are just long and skinny instead of sort of tall and balanced, I guess. So to start, I have my card base. Now when you're making a slimline card, there are all sorts of different um, dimensions you can use. I size mine so that it would fit easily inside my envelope. So if I lay this on top of my envelope, you can see I've got a, little, a fair bit of clearance all the way around. So I just kind of measured and sized it for that. So this is, my card base is eight and a half by seven. Okay, so eight and a half by seven. So it's basically, I cut off four inches from the bottom of a sheet of cardstock. Okay. Uh, Laura, the slim lines are actually in the mini. They're in the new mini. They are so easy to miss. Uh, let me actually show you where to find them. If I could find my catalog. It's right behind me. So the easiest place to find anything in the mini is in our catalog at a glance. Um, the slimline envelopes are right here on page 87. Um, but again, so easy to miss because they take up so little real estate in the catalog. So again, eight and a half by seven. I've scored in the middle at three and a half inches. Okay, so that gives me my card base. So we're gonna give this a really good burnish. Okay. And then we have some of this gorgeous DSP. Now, I love the fact that I can use the full six inch width of this gorgeous paper. Um, I cut a little bit off from the bottom and a little bit off from the top to end up with something that was three and a half inches. Nope, three and three eighths. Three and three eighths by six, okay? And then I cut a piece of evening evergreen to act as a mat that is three and three quarters by six and one eighth. Okay, so that's gonna give me that 16th of an inch border all the way around. Okay, now before we glue this on, we're gonna do some stamping. So I have my beautiful DSP here. I'm gonna bring back my Evening Evergreen ink pad and my tree stamp. And we are going to stamp our tree sort of along, we're gonna create a horizon line because the horizon in this is a little bit obscured, right? So one thing that I would recommend when you're trying to create a horizon is make sure your um, piece that you're stamping on is straight and then use the grid lines kind of as a guide. So decide where your horizon line is going to be. I'm probably going to do it along this grid, this line right here. And I'm just going to really try to line up the base of my trees with that line. So again, I said this one here, was it? Yes. So I'm going to start over here. I'm going to stamp some trees. Okay. And then I'm gonna come over a little bit, and again, I'm gonna to try to keep that line lined up with 
the previous one. Okay, so there's my trees, and then I'm gonna add a couple just off to the side here. Again, using that same line. We wanna kinda of be consistent with our horizon line. Okay, there we go. Easy, easy, easy. Instant, beautiful card. Now we're gonna add a little bit more detail to this one. So I'm going to bring in sort of my marsh grass um, image here. And I'm going to stamp this in Sahara sand. Now Sahara sand isn't really one of the colors in this DSP, but I wanted something that was going to contrast a little bit with sort of that soft brown. Um, it does pull in a little bit of the sort of crumb cake shade that's in this paper. There's so many um, shades in this paper, you can almost get away with using any color of ink. It's, well, maybe not bright pink. Some of them you could use bright pink. Hi, Debbie. I am feeling better. Thank you. Um, so this time I want my grass to kind of be growing up from off the page. Okay. So I don't want to see the base of the grass. So I'm just going to kind of make sure that the base is kind of down below and I'm just going to kind of come across and add some grass to my image. And then I'm going to stamp off and add a little bit more. It's really subtle. It just adds a bit of depth and extra texture. You're not really going to see much of it. Um, but when you look closely, you can see the, the stamped off grass in the background, okay? And then the only other bit of stamping here is to add some birds because, well, every landscape requires birds, right? So we're going to use our basic gray ink again. And these guys are going to be flying sort of off to the right. So I'm going to make sure my birds are right side up. Ooh, that's really... Let's give that a scrub because we're going to have big time halos and that would not be good. So let's clean that up and start with a fresh and clean stamp. There we go. Much better. All right. So we're going to stamp these guys kind of flying up and off to the right, just like that. And that's it. Like, look at how easy that was. And it's such a beautiful, like I would hang this in my house. It's such a beautiful landscape. All right. So now it's just a matter of putting it together again. So easy, you guys. So easy. So I have my mat. I'm going to adhere my DSP to my mat. So I'm going to use a little bit of liquid glue just so I can get it positioned just so. So we will take this and get it stuck down. Okay. And then we have, where's my... I almost used my envelope as my card base. There's my card base. Okay, now this is going to get centered, but before we do that, um, I have a two by seven inch, no, two by eight and a half inch piece of In Good Taste designer series paper. This is in the annual catalog. It's the one that has all the cool different textural um, sheets. This is actually the pattern that I use in the background for all of my um, social media posts with all of my, my cards. Um, but I'm just going to adhere this right across the front of my card, centered, okay? And uh, that's going to help to ground and anchor our focal image. It's going to fill in some of the blank space too. So let's pop this on. I'm going to again use my grid lines just to help me get this straight and centered. So there we go. Oh, that's a raggedy end on that piece. Let's just see if we can clean that up a bit. How's that? We're just going to take our snips and clean up. I must have had a very dull blade in my trimmer when I cut that. There we go. All right. Then we are going to pop this on just like that. Okay. We're still going to add some detail here. Don't worry. I haven't forgotten. Um, we are going to, we're going to add our die cut pieces, but we're going to put this on first. And what I liked about this is that it fills the whole space. So I cut the width um, or the height, I guess, to be the same height as the card. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I wanted it to fill in as much space as possible on the card again, because of that beautiful paper. So I'm just kind of eyeballing this to get it centered. You certainly could measure it if you wanted to, but I'm not going to worry too much about being perfect. Okay. And then we have this adorable die cut picket fence. There's actually two dies in the set. Um, we're going to use this one um, on the front and then we're going to do the inside of this card too, because we can, and it's cute. So why not? So 
Um, I have that and then I have a little bit of grass. So this again is just die cut from more of the DSP. In fact, these pieces that I used on the inside are cut from the piece that I trimmed off when I cut my DSP for the front. Okay, so no waste <laughs> at all, okay? All right, so we're gonna take our snips and we're gonna cut off. I use what, five pickets? One, two, three, four, five. So I'm just gonna take and cut the extra unneeded pickets off my fence. And then that is going to get glued along the, oh, did I do that wrong? I did, it's this guy that I used. Yep, wrong perspective, that's the one I used, the other one's on the inside. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and glue that down. Now this requires so little uh, glue, it's not even funny, it's such a light little piece. You certainly could use adhesive sheets on the back of these, but not really necessary. It's pretty easy to glue and it doesn't need a lot. Now I did cut these from the same DSP that I used um, for my strip, my background strip. So there is our little fence. Press that into place. And then we have our grass. Now the grass is gonna kinda go right about there. I'm gonna trim a little bit of it off, just cause I don't really want it trailing off onto the card. So we'll get rid of that little bit. It's gonna get stuck down right about there. Again, you could use adhesive sheets on this, but you need so little glue to stick these guys down that it's almost, it's not necessary, really. Um, so again, this is gonna get stuck right along the bottom. Whoops, it's too far over. Let's put that right about there. Okay, and then we're going to add some adorable little pebbles. Now these are embellishments. They were um, not orderable for about two days and now they're back in stock. So they're available and they are so cute. Um, they come in, there's actually three shades. There's like a cinnamon cider, a basic gray, or maybe a gray granite, and either a gray granite or a Sahara sand. So they're sort of a light, a dark gray, and then the brown. So we're gonna grab a couple of these. Oh, June, I am using the On the Horizon Suite, this one here. It is in the Stampin' Up! January to June mini catalog. It is fantastic. Um, the Designer Series paper is also from that same suite. Okay, so if you have not um, checked that out yet, it is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I highly recommend it. Really, really easy to make. Really cute landscape cards. So I'm just adding a few of these little pebbles along the bottom of my sort of shoreline here. We'll add one of the, whoops, come here you. We'll add another brown one over here. And then this little guy here. There we go, there's our pebbles. So cute, right? I love those embellishments. Now we need to do our sentiment. So I have here just a little um, die cut stitched rectangle. Hi Krista. Um, and again, I've die cut this from the top little bit that I cut off. So there is no waste here. I used pretty much all of my six by six piece of designer series paper. I've got my, <coughs> excuse me, thanks for everything sentiment from the stamp set. And I'm going to stamp it in evening evergreen ink. So I'm gonna ink that up. I'm gonna have to pull this fairly close to me. I hope you guys can still see it, but it's really hard to stamp. <laughs> when you can't look straight down on things. So we're just gonna do that and hope it's, oh, it's actually pretty good. How about that? I actually cut two backups just in case I screwed it up. <laughs> I have so little faith in myself. All right, then we're gonna add a little bit of twine to the back. So I just kind of did this little coiled twine. I wanted to add that extra texture, but I didn't want a bow or anything. I didn't feel like it worked on this card. So I'm just going to take and add some tape to the back of my label here. And then I'm just going to take my twine and wrap it, I don't know, four, five times maybe around two fingers. We're going to slide it off of there. We're going to let the, the loops loosen a little bit and then we're just going to stick them down. And then I'm just going to take the tails and hide them because I don't like seeing the tails. And that's all there is to it. It's that easy. Um, nothing fancy, no like super special technique. It's just a matter of running around your fingers. Okay, so we're gonna add a couple of dimensionals to the back of that and pop it onto the front of your card. Yes, Louise, I love it when you can use every little bit too. Um, I am not one to save super small scraps. I just, I don't have the space. <laughs> if I saved every little scrap, I would be inundated. So, <clears throat> so I do often throw out <clears throat> little offcuts like that, but uh, when I'm able to use them, it makes me happy. So we're gonna pop this on right below our trees here. 
just like that. And there we go. Isn't that cute? Now the inside, I cut a piece of basic white that is eight and a quarter by three and a quarter. Yes. Okay. And then remember how I had these die cut pieces. These are from the dies. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is not great tonight. I'm um, using this die. So these, there's these two dies here that are kind of like, what do I do with these? Um, they're again to add additional detail to your landscape. So these are like hills. They could be rocks on a shoreline. Um, same thing. This could, these could be waves. Okay. Lots of possibilities with those dies, but I just kind of wanted to create some sand dunes on the front of my card. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue these down along the front, kind of like this. Okay. And then this guy's going to go right there. Okay. They're just going to kind of glue on like that. Super simple. But again, I didn't want to waste any of this beautiful DSP. So we're going to add a little bit of glue. And these are just going to run right along the bottom edge of my white piece here. So we've got one. And this, whoops, that one's a little low. Let's get that pushed back up. I have to trim that because that one kind of sunk down off of my card base there. And then we'll add this little partial bit over here. Okay. And actually, I kind of like the layered look. I might just leave that. I like it kind of raggedy. It's kind of different. Add a bit more glue there. And then we have our little fence. Now, this is one I actually cut a piece off, but that's okay. We're going to add it um, onto our sort of sand dune there. So again, a little teeny bit of glue. Not much required at all for this little tiny die cut. And that's that. Super, super simple. Now you certainly could stamp another sentiment if you wanted to on the inside. I didn't bother. Um, I just kept it really simple with the die cuts. But you certainly could add another sentiment. We'll add some tape and pop this inside our card. And we are done. So easy to make beautiful cards with this awesome suite. Okay, now on my envelope, I stamped some more of the uh, marsh grass. I just love that extra little touch on my envelope. And there you go, beautiful slimline card. All right, hope you guys like that one. Moving on, last card. I told you these were easy. <laughs> All right, this one is a Fun Fools. Um, I did one of these a while back, like probably two or three years ago, and I actually had to go back and look at my own video to figure out how to do it because it had been that long. So this is one that when you open it up, again, showcases that beautiful landscape scene, okay? So this is just a really simple, if you look at the base, it's just a Z fold, okay? And then you do a little bit of fancy cutting, not fancy, just fancy measuring, I guess, um, of your DSP to get the panels. So really, really quite simple. And I did have measurements written down. I think I left them over there. So I'll just kind of measure as we go here. So to start, I have just a standard card base. Okay. This is eight and a half by five and a half. So half of a sheet of cardstock. And I've scored it in the middle at four and a quarter, just like we normally would. But then I've added one extra score line and I think one and a quarter. Yes. So one and a quarter and four and a quarter is all there is to the, to the base. Okay. So we are going to fold this in half along our score line. Yes, Deb, this is a great fold, this, which is why I had to go back and figure out how to make it again, because I knew it would be a great one for this DSP. So I fold it in half along my score line, and then I'm going to fold back on my one and a quarter inch score line. Okay, so that's my base. It's a Z fold. See the Z? All right. Um, so then we are going to bring in our DSP. So I've already gone ahead and cut it, but I'm going to explain to you how I did it. So if I lay out my DSP as though it were is a six by six piece. So it started out as a six by six piece of that beautiful DSP. I cut a little bit off the bottom and a little bit off the top to cut it down to five and a quarter by six. Okay. And then I started from the left edge and I cut... And I will put all of these in the, in the uh, description after all these measurements. But I start at two and a quarter. Okay. Then the next one is one and five eighths. And then the last one is just what's left. Okay. So you're cutting two and a quarter. And then one and five eighths. All right. So when I lay all my pieces out, that's the way that they're going to go into my card. Okay. All right. So I'm going to keep them in order just to make my life easy. <laughs> 
<laughs> and um, then the first thing we're actually going to do is glue this white panel in. That's going to be where we write our greeting, right? Um, but there is a method to my madness. So this is our white piece. It is one and three quarters by five and a quarter. So it's going to get glued to the inside of our card with an equal border top and sides. Okay, so again, I'm going to use my liquid glue just to make sure I can wiggle that into place exactly where I want it. So we're going to pop this on. Okay, so there is our white piece. All right, now the reason that I've done that is that this first piece on the front, we wanna make sure that when the card is closed, this piece lines up and covers the white piece underneath, right? So having this white piece down first makes it much easier to glue this guy on, okay? It helps us get our positioning down. If I did this first and then tried to do the white, I would have a really hard time getting it lined up. So the tip, the hot tip with this fun fold is to glue your white piece on first. Okay. All right. So now we are going to apply some glue only to this little um, section here on our card base. I'm not going to even put any on my um, DSP because I run the risk of ending up with it on my white and we don't want to do that because we're going to stick our card shut. So I'm going to put a little bit of liquid glue just on this little panel here. Okay. And then I'm gonna bring in my DSP, I'm gonna lay it down, and I'm going to make sure my edges cover my white piece and that it's straight, okay? And that way, when I open my card, I haven't stuck it shut. <laughs> Okay, so that's a really, really important tip for this card. All right, now I'm gonna open this card out. I'm just gonna burnish that a little bit so it lies flat. Because when we're adding our other pieces, it, the easiest way to do it is to have the card li lying flat so that we can get equal borders here, okay? So I'm gonna bring in my next size, it's this one here. It's going to go right in there, and again, I'm paying attention to having equal border here and at the fold. Okay, so we're gonna add again a little bit of adhesive. I like to use liquid glue with this just so that I can get my pieces positioned. It just gives you that extra little bit of time to get things exactly where you want them. There we go, okay. And then we are going to add this one. Now before we add this, we're gonna stamp our birds. I actually forgot to stamp my marsh grass here, but that's okay, I have a fix for that. I have a fix for everything because I have made every mistake there is to make in stamping. So. <laughs> There's always a fix. All right, we're gonna pull in our bird stamp again and our basic gray ink. And we're just gonna add some little birds flying across the top of our image here, or our DSP, I should say. And we're gonna go ahead and glue this down. So here we go. Hi, Debbie. I am, thank you, I, I am feeling much better than I was. I'm still kind of tired, but I think that's just <laughs> the function of being a teacher these days. And it's Friday, so there you go. Friday is uh, my day to crash. <laughs> I usually, well, I did, I came home from work and took a nap. All right, so there we go. Okay, there's our, our all our, of our pieces are glued down. When we close our card, everything's good. So that's it. It's such an easy fold, but such a great way to showcase um, the DSP. Where did I put my marsh grass? There it is. All right, so now we're gonna fix this where we forgot, or I forgot, we didn't, you didn't do anything, I did. I'm gonna grab a post-it note. So once you, when you glue something down and you decide you wanna add a little bit of stamping and you can't because you don't wanna get your image on your base, all you do is put another piece of paper below to cover that and then we're gonna just stamp right across with our Marsh grass. I'm gonna bring in my evening evergreen. Hi, Leith, I am much better, thank you. All right, so we're just gonna take and stamp that right across there. There's our image, easy peasy. And then we'll get rid of our post-it and no one will ever know that we forgot to stamp it before we stuck it down. See how that works? I'm telling you, I'm the master of mistake fixing <laughs> because I've had so much practice. All right, we're gonna stamp our um, sentiments and then we will finish putting this together. So, my sentiments, um, I used this die. This die is actually designed to cut out the sort of wood um, grain image there, but I used it sort of as a label. So we're gonna stamp that and put it right across 
our the inside of our card. I'm going to bring back my relax and enjoy your day stamp. And I'm going to stamp this in Evening Evergreen. Again, this is cut from the DSP scraps, all right? there You always have little odds and ends of DSP. With this uh, paper, you don't want to waste any of it. It's just so fantastic. So <laughs> use it for your, your labels. I think I'm going to turn this this way because I love that little bit of purple there. So I'm going to stamp my wishing you so much happiness. This is another stitched rectangle that I die cut from DSP scrap. So those are going to go on. We're not going to put them on just yet. We're going to add our detail with our die cuts. So we have a couple of fences. So this time I went with a white picket fence. So our larger one is going to kind of run on our largest panel right across there. So we're going to add a little bit of glue. Oh, thanks, Lee. I'm glad you guys are looking forward to the glass. That's um, on my to-do list to, to prep this weekend. I'm going to be, well, in between moving everything out of my studio because we're going to finally put all of the pieces together to build my new workstation. We finally were able to get all the parts and pieces we need. Ikea has been having inventory issues just like everybody else. And uh, we finally were able to get all our bits. So I'm very excited to get my studio redone. It's been a bit of a wait, but I, I, it was supposed to be a Christmas gift, but we'll just call it a Valentine's gift now, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so I have some grass, again, that I have cut from the DSP. So I did kind of a couple of different shades. I just cut from different parts in the DSP because those, those washes have so much texture and shading. You can get some really cool um, effects with it. So I'm going to put the lighter one on this side. We're going to trim off that extra overhang that we don't need. Just like that. And then this little guy is going to go on this side in front of our fence. It's so much fun playing. It's like, it's almost like paper dolls for cards, like playing with all these little bits and pieces and making different scenes. It's so fun. I love it. Whoopsie. Stay put. All right. So there is our grass. Okay. And then we're going to add a few little pebbles along our stamped grass here. So again, we'll just bring in a few of these. To kind of run a oh, let's not do them all the same shape and we'll go with a brown one and i like to have some sort of like leaning against each other i just kind of feel like that looks a little bit more natural than having them all lined up in a row um having them kind of angled and um kind of looking scattered if that makes any sense we're gonna add this guy here there we go there are our pebbles okay so now we just need to add our sentiments so we're gonna pop the relax up speaking of relax have you guys tried relax riesling <laughs> it just made me think of the bottle of wine that's in my fridge right now um thank you jackie thanks so much hi sandy how are you nice to see your name hope you are well so we're gonna pop that one on there I'm going to close this up. Now, I wanted to add a little bit of texture to this sort of large um, piece here. And I played around with different um, embossing folders. And I actually kind of liked the brick the best. Because I kind of feel like, um, you know, maybe this is like a brick wall that you're that opens on to this beautiful landscape. So that's kind of what I was envisioning. Um, I did try the evergreens. Um I, it's beautiful. The only thing that bugged me is that there are no evergreens in the um, landscape. So it kind of bugged me that I had evergreens on my um, card base. So <laughs> that was the that was the reason I didn't use the evergreens, but they totally work. So if you are less, you know, OCD than me, um, you can totally use the evergreens and they will work beautifully. All right. So then we're going to add our wishing you so much happiness. And I just noticed that I didn't stamp my birds on this piece. So let's add some birds to that. We're going to be a little bit strategic with our birds on this one. So we're going to add them, make sure they're going the right direction. We don't want upside down birds. There we go. And then we're going to add our sentiment. Now we're going to close the card and I'm going to adhere the sentiment. So it's kind of centered when the card is closed. Now I'm not going to put anything, any adhesive under this side because that will stick the card flat. We don't want to do that. So we're just going to kind of go one and two on the end. And, oh, thank you, Diane. 
Um, Diane, I am going to post all of the measurements in the video description after after I'm done, okay? So if you come back um, and check the video description in about half an hour, you will see all the measurements. It'll also be on my YouTube channel. So all of my replays end up on YouTube, and again, all of the measurements for every card are posted there. Okay, you just kind of have to scroll down in the video description. Um, I make a point of doing that because I, I get lots of requests and it's just easier for me to post everything there and then everybody can look at it anytime they like. Okay, all right, so there it is, that's it. So like these cards are so simple. Like do you understand why I was a little bit embarrassed to be doing a video <laughs> with so little stamping and such simple cards? But honestly, this suite is so fantastic. Um, anybody can make beautiful cards. Like you don't have to be like some seasoned pro stamper. You just stamp a couple trees, a couple birds, stick them down and you're done. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. That is it for me tonight. I think I, I, I hope you enjoyed these projects and, uh, do check out the measurements if you want to recreate any of them. They are so easy and this suite is so fantastic. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a fantastic weekend. I will be back at my usual time next week on Tuesday with brand new to be released on Tuesday products. So stay tuned and be sure you come back. Okay. Have a great weekend. Bye for now.